But if you Google the phrase Security Council in the New York Times or even in the Omaha paper, you discover a Security Council pops up at least once or twice or three times a day as you use the council for various crises, whether it's Darfur or Iran or the wonderful work that's being done on the Harari investigation in Lebanon to try to free Lebanon from Syria's dominance. So it, it may well be that the readers are less interested in the instrument. I mean, if you ask the same question, does the normal reader of an American newspaper care about the Senate Appropriations Committee? No. They care about the issues that the Senate Appropriations Committee is addressing, whatever instrument is effective. So, and, and also there's the phenomenon in American media that they, they love car, car crashes and train wrecks. So of course when there's a scandal, they love it. That's what fills the news hole. Uh, but on good news, it's likelier to be the debate over the merits of the solution than the instrument itself. That's um, an excellent point of a made chip in right there, because I think Ruth has put a finger on it. People don't care about the Senate Appropriations Committee. They, they care about the taxes that the Appropriations Committee is, I mean, the, the expenditures it's authorizing and so on. But that's precisely because in the U.S. you take the Senate for granted. No one is threatening the existence or the funding of the Senate. No one is, is, is essentially concerned about the future of the institution, it's embedded in the Constitution, it's taken for granted. The problem in the UN, uh, in the US, I beg your pardon, is the UN is still up for debate. And that there are still people who challenge the very utility of the institution that is delivering all these goods. And one of the striking things about why the UN was created in the first place is that we had a horrendous first half of the 20th century. I think if you look back at those 45 years where you had two world wars, countless civil wars, uh, mass expulsions of populations, genocide, the horrors of the Holocaust and Hiroshima, my gosh, if the century had gone on like that, we wouldn't have really survived to the 21st. And, and the far-sighted statesmen and stateswomen of the world at the end of the Second World War said, we need to do something to prevent the second half of the 20th century looking like the first half. And so they set up a system. We call it global governance today, but a system of interlocking institutions, rules of the road by which the world could live, and they put the, U, the UN at the, as a sort of keystone of this new arch that they had built, this architecture of global governance. And at the heart of it, therefore, lay the idea that in order to keep the peace, in order to help human beings to progress and so on, you needed a mechanism as well as a system of rules that would actually be to the benefit of all. Mm -hmm.